The beauty of macro, how to edit and feature nature's beautiful flowers, is our topic today. A little bit of our coffee break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Now, I'm on location in Orlando, Florida, where I'm staying at a beautiful resort, and I decided to go out and do a little macro photography just for you guys. In fact, let me see if I can pull up my, my phone is right here. All right, so here's my phone. These are the images that, um, or this right here is what I shot. All right, in fact, there they are. So the, these are the, the flowers I saw poolside, and I just love the way the light was dancing with it. So not during these shots, of course. Oh, that's the sauna. <laughs> we'll go back out of the sauna. So here we are. These are the the location or the flowers that are by the poolside. And I just I thought they looked beautiful the way they had it. I just wanted to get tight and personal with it. And these are the shots that I got from it. All right. So let me dive right in. So the beauty of macro, how to capture and enhance nature's flowers. Here we go. First of all, fill the frame. Fill the frame. So to capture the interest key, the intricacies of uh, the details of the flowers, it's important to fill the frame by getting up close. This can be achieved with either a macro lens, which I used, a telephoto lens, or a close-up filter. Now, macro lenses are ideal for close-up photography because it allows you to focus just inches away, while a telephoto lens and a close-up filters, you know, they offer alternative options to achieve a similar effect. It's not identical, but it's very close. The beauty, uh, I'm sorry, use of a shallow depth of field. So macro photography allows you uh, to create a shallow depth of field, blurring the background and highlighting your subject. Now, achieving this effect by using a wide aperture with a low f-stop number, but be careful not to make it too wide because then you can uh, result in excessive blurring and a lack of sharpness. Uh, pay attention to lighting. Proper lighting is crucial for macro photography. Uh, shooting during the early morning or late afternoon to take advantage of soft, warm, natural light. When shooting indoors, use a diffuser light source or a reflector uh, to soften harsh shadows and achieve the desired uh, reset, the de de desired effects. Um, experiment with angles and framing. Macro flowers uh, photography provides the opportunity to experiment with angles and framing, offering unique perspectives that aren't typically explored in other forms of photography. Try shooting from a different angle, such as getting low and shooting upward, or shooting from above. You can also play with the framing by positioning the subject off-center or using negative space to create a more dramatic composition. And then edit with uh, precision using Luminar Neo. So Luminar Neo, to use Luminar Neo to fine tune your macro flowers um, with precision, adjust the exposure, contrast, saturation to create a stunning and natural looking image. Uh, Luminar Neo offers advanced editing tools, but be careful not to overdo it and create an artificial look. Remember to enhance the natural beauty of your subject and to avoid a drastic change. So these are the steps. Fill the frame. Use a shallow depth of field. Pay attention to lighting. Experiment with, with angles. And then edit uh, using Luminar Neo, but making sure you don't go overboard with the editing. All right? So those are my five top tips. Now I'm going to show you what I did with those. And I have no problem showing you where I did things wrong, all right? Now let's use, you know what? I'm gonna use this image here. Now, actually, let's use the raw file. So oh, I know I'm under complete, that's why. So let me get back to here, all right? All right, people, 
here it comes. This the one. Yep, this is it. All right, that looks great. Fill the frame. Get up tight. All that. Well, time to start judging me because this is the real shot. All right, now, the reason why I added using a telephoto lens is because here I did use a 105 macro lens. I'm telling you, it killed Trying to crawl in to get this shot. And in Florida, we have red ants. Thank God the red ants weren't out, but those stinking ducks were. So to get this shot, that was a lot of pain. If I had a telephoto lens, then my framing for this shot would be, would be more like this. You see the difference? So if I used a telephoto, in my opinion, if I used a telephoto lens, this is what I got. I would have gotten. However, um, the telephoto lens that I would be using, I think the if I zoomed in on it, it would have been f f. Um, I want to say six, uh, six point one. So here, let's look over here. I shot this ISO four hundred. 105, okay, F8, at one uh, sixteen hundredth of a second, all right? So that telephoto lens would work, would work. However, keep in mind the macro lens, that's its job. Its sole purpose is to get incredible tack sharp images uh, with that camera. The telephoto lens, it may be a little soft. So later today, I'm going to go out and see the difference between Two of the lenses. So I got the shots I like. Now I'm going to go back out and experiment to see could I get similar results without using a macro lens. All right. So again, that right there, let me make sure all the edits are. Yep. All right. So that's straight out of camera. I love, I love the bokeh. I love what it's doing. How did I get the black area back here? Honestly, angles. I just sat there, and because I did photograph this in the morning, I didn't have to put any special background drop, backdrop behind it. I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that that's a tree behind it. I'm not 100% certain, but by getting the shot the way I did this, again, angles. Let me see if I have some of the other ones. Yep. So here was the green you know, the green of the shrubbery that was behind it. And here you can kind of see using other uh, forms, you know, other flowers to get the background. So what you're not seeing, which is really good, <laughs> I snuck one in, you're not seeing the building, you're not seeing cement pavements, all right? Uh, these were some of my other favorite ones when I decided to incorporate the sky into the background. Let's go right about here. Now I broke the rule, and I've said this so many times, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them as an artist. Typically, the rules of three, you want three, or the rules of odd rather. You want odd um, objects in your scene. To me, this I still like it. still works. If I crop it in here, or if I were to go a little bit in tight like this, it still works. Yes, I broke the rule and only put two subjects into the frame, but I feel I felt it work. Um, so that looks good down there. Same thing here, using the sky right here, using the sky um, as the the backdrop. All right. So how do we edit this stuff? Uh, let's do this. I love these shots here, but you know what? I am going to use this one. All right. And I'll just do a real quick crop. And I do want this format. Notice I am cropping in quite a bit. So had I have used that telephoto lens, then I would save every pixel possible. But to me, this looks great. Now, at first, Again, being the portrait guy that I am, I went to the mood tool, and I'm telling you right now, this is wrong. 
I started doing stuff like this to try to get something creative going. And then I realized, you know what? Nope. It's nature. Let's stick to natural beauty. So under the essential tools, enhance or accent AI, look at this. I opted for accent AI and then just toned or brought the sky in, popped a little structure, close the details even more. Look at that. Just a little bit. And from here, I could darken the edges, but you know what? I like it right where it's at. And then play with composition. So I could come in and let's say crop it to here. Or um, let's grab one more. And by the way, this shot here, yes, I'm laying on the ground. I got bored, looked up, and took the shot. Um, I love these ones here. But I do want to go, I do want to explore the one we did earlier. Here it is, this one. All right. So I could definitely tell. Let's see if it comes. Yeah. So this is not as tack sharp as it could be. And honestly, it's because I was in a really awkward position and I didn't have a tripod. So, yes, a tripod would have made this um, a lot, well, a little sharp. But overall, I like where it's at. So let's crop this or let's edit this one. Decide how we want to crop it. Um, we could come in. I should have done a little Dutch tilt. So why not act like we did? Right about there. You'll notice some of the other shots I did do a touch, a Dutch tilt. I really wanted those bo the bokeh behind it. But you know what? This will be fine. There we go. So if I wanted a shot like this, then what we could do is come over to develop and en enhance the blacks. Just look at that. Bring down the highlights a bit. There, now we're getting some contrast into the scene. There we go. Well, I take it back. It is sharp. Pop a little more contrast. But right here, that right there, en enriching the black tones helps tremendously. And then structure AI. Not too much. Good. And one last area. And by the way, if you notice what I'm doing is I'm collapsing, I'm collapsing my tools just so I don't have to you know, go all the way to the bottom and let's say grab the super contrast. Good. And right about there. That's what the midtones are going to do for us. Nope. I'm happy with the midtones. And so I'm going to put that back to zero. Let's see if I can enhance the shadows. Well, look what the shadows are doing. I don't like that because I like this little fringe coming down. So I'm not going to mess with the shadows. Let's see if it adds or... Okay. It's a slight change, nothing major, but it's still there. All right. So here we have it before, after, and we have a very good image. All right. So there we have it. Now, out of the camera, yes, they came really good because I was able to focus solely on those images. Trying to use my, my smartphone, getting in, it wasn't... It wasn't as isolated as what we did with the macro lens. So again, the reason why there's hardly any editing involved is because we got it right in camera first, and then we're just using the software just to do some slight editing to it. All right? So there we have it. Uh, there is a full article that we've written, that I've written for this, 
and it outlines those steps that I mentioned earlier and gives a little bit more detail. All right. Well, for those that are here, please stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment. Everyone else, thanks so much for joining us, and I'll see you at the next coffee break.